thank you so much for having me here today. I really look forward to present to actually a little different crowd that we normally present to. We are an NGO, so we are working a lot with maternal and newborn health, so it's normally a different crowd that we are presenting at. Um, yes, I work actually as the M Health Manager of Maternity Foundation, which is because uh, we work with mobile health tools, so that's, that's my my role, um, and Maternity Foundation is a Danish NGO, and we've worked the last four years with University of Copenhagen as well as University of South and Denmark on developing this safe delivery app that is intended to help healthcare workers in developing countries on how to manage the complications that actually kills more than 800 women every day. So before I go into details on how we developed it, how we are planning on bringing it to scale. I want to show you a short video that explains the, vid the actual app a little more in details for you. Let's see. Hello. Skilled birth attendance is crucial to the survival of mothers and newborn. But in sub-Saharan Africa, there's an acute lack of skilled attendance at birth, especially in remote areas. This is a huge challenge. We believe this challenge can be overcome with mobile health interventions. The Safe Delivery app is designed to teach and instruct birth attendants how to manage complicated deliveries. The app consists of 10 simple and intuitive animated instruction films that train and instructs health workers on how to handle different clinical interventions during a delivery. The user can either choose to watch the film in its full length or go to a specific chapter. For example, how to handle a bleeding after birth. It overcomes major barriers, such as the outreach gap of traditional classroom training, language barriers and low literacy among health workers. The app includes push messages with quiz questions refreshing the health worker's knowledge. It also provides easy access to essential information such as drug and practical procedure lists. The app has been tested in a randomized controlled trial in Ethiopia and Ghana. The app is available free for download at App Store and Google Play. In order to ensure a sustainable rollout, and to advise our partners, we will continue to build evidence and consolidate learning on how the app works across different settings. So, yeah, this is who's developed and so on, but um, this should give you a better idea of how the app actually is. I think sometimes it's a little difficult to be talking about an app without actually showing it how is it. Um, if you want, you can go in and download it right now and see it with your fingers also. Um, but let me just take one step back to when it all started. Um, as we saw in the video, it's rather difficult to get out to uh, healthcare workers that works in the rural areas of the health system. And often they don't have a lot of practical training um, and they don't have anyone to ask if they're in doubt. We've seen that bringing them back to school doesn't work the way we want it to. So, um, so what we wanted was to, to bring the books and the web pages and then merge it into one single app that we could bring out to the health workers so that they will have this training right where they are. Um, we Actually, we just saw this, but um, I also brought a short description on how the mobile penetration is scaling. And this shows that actually in Africa, it's projected that more than 98% of the people there will have a phone within the few, a few years. Um, and do we look at the mobile or the smartphone users, this also increases massively. So the mobile phones are there, we just need to take advantage of this opportunity this is. Um, so, when looking at the app and the actual design of it, we had like two primary criteria. We wanted to bring high quality training out to the health workers in rural areas, and we also wanted to be a quick reference tool for emergency situations. 
Furthermore, we were addressing health workers that has very low literacy often, and they also perhaps doesn't have so much tech literacy either, and they don't have much practical training. So we needed to make an app that was very simple and very easy to use and with easy access. Um, so we decided to make these clinical instruction videos. And hereby we could dem demonstrate these very complex procedures in an easy, understandable way. We also included these push messages that we actually seen work very well. They remind the health workers to continue to use this app. I would say that in these settings we are working, we are not really struggling with the uh, competition of having a lot of apps, but still you need something to, to motivate you to continue to use it. Furthermore, we made these action cards that are to be used in emergency situations. It's like a pocket card that doc the doctors are using here in Denmark, or like a checklist, where you can quickly go in and see what is, am I supposed to do in this specific procedure. And in regards to the app, we do have a few more buttons than one, but it's not many, actually. It's only five buttons, um, and we made it quite easy for these health workers to use. Also, in emergency situation, it shouldn't be like a 10 steps before you get into the, the information you need. Um, furthermore, it, it looks like an app and not like a web page, so it's easy in that way to use. We also uh, make it in local languages, and uh, once it's installed on the phone, there's no need for internet access, which is quite important in the areas where we work. So, the app that we've developed is a clinical instruction tool. So, to ensure a really solid and documented uh, content, we had this very comprehensive process before we actually came to the final product. <coughs> First of all, we had to compress all the content from books and guidelines down to a seven-minute video. Um, and the way we did that was by identifying these key points for each procedure, and then we had a, a group of health experts validating this. Um, and they actually, this group of health experts had to validate also the script, the sketch of the films, and the full animated vi videos. Um, this is just to take out of some of the people we, or the, the organizations we had um, to validate the process. Among others, it was WHO, African Union, Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And hereby, we ensured that the app was based on international clinical guidelines. Um, but all in all, it took us one year to go from these key points to the sketches and then to actually having the final animated videos. So, but one thing is, what our clinical health expert group says is the right thing. Another thing is actually how do the end users perceive it and how does it work? So what we did was that we wanted to, to test uh, the effect of the safe delivery app, both on improving the quality of care as well as on uh, improving the maternal and newborn survival. It is so that there is actually more than 40,000 mHealth tools developed, but very few of these has actually been tested thoroughly and even less has been brought to scale. And the intention from the beginning with our app was to bring it to scale. We wanted it to be brought out to as many health workers as possible. Um, so therefore, it was really important for us to test it thoroughly so that we had evidence on its effect when we wanted to bring it out. So what we did was that we conducted this randomized control trial in Ethiopia for one year. We had 130 health workers participating, uh, where half of them were given a phone with the app on. And then we tested the health workers' skills and knowledge level before they were given the app, after six months, and then again after 12 months. And I'm not going to go into details on all the results here. Um, I'll just uh, jump down to one of the areas. Um, we tested the health workers' ability to handle a bleeding after birth, which is, which is actually the main cause of maternal deaths. And what we saw was that their ability, both in knowledge and their skills, increased during the year they were using the app. Um, the gray one, or I don't know if it looks really gray here, but that one is, is the, the health workers that did not have the app, so therefore there was not really any increase in their skills and knowledge level. Um, and if we look at the skills over here, it actually more than doubled during the year they were using the app. 
what is really interesting is that their um, skills and knowledge level increased during the whole year. What we'd expected was that we would see an increase during the first six months, and then it would rather stagnate and they would perhaps not use the app anymore or they would reach like, the level of knowledge and skills. But that didn't happen. They continued to use it over time. So it really shows that the app is good at also retention of skills, which is definitely one of the things we see as a problem when we are doing classroom trainings. So having an app like this, of course, a key success criteria is positive user perception. Um, we therefore also tested the health workers' perception of using the app. And overall, they were really positively. They were really, they thought that it was a really practical tool that brought this theoretical knowledge that they already had into practical knowledge. Furthermore, it, they felt that it increased both their skills and knowledge level, but also their confidence. So their work motivation really increased during the time they had it. What we saw before we introduced the app was that many of the health workers felt that they, um, they felt really demotivated for, for working because they felt scared of actually doing some of these procedures. And this changed with the app. They felt that it was very effective and very intuitive. Um, also, the less technical experience found that it was very easy to use. And then it influenced the community re relations positively. Um, again, before the testing, we saw that many of the health workers felt that there was no trust in the community for their services. Um, but that also changed. So the, the app has actually also influenced that, the to, the, that it's actually creating trust in the health system. Um, and lastly, they felt that it was a very reliable tool for usage when in doubt. So, so all in all, it was really positive feedback. I just want to read out this quote, because uh, I think it's, it really states how the user perception is. Um, this is a health worker. She's been working with the app for one year. And she says, since I got this app, I have experienced a great change in my personal skills. Before we had learned at school concerning, uh, so before what we have learned at school concerning deliveries was only theoretical, no practical application or experience. But now we we learn from this app. What we learn from this app is great. We can observe the procedures step by step and see the human anatomy. So this was really great for us to see, but. I need to stress that making an app like this, of course, there are limitations. Uh, first of all, this is not a quick fix solution. It cannot stand alone. There are many drivers for making a, 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 a strong health system, and the app is not the only tool for that, of course. Um, furthermore, we've seen, of course, that it helps strengthen the skills and knowledge level of the health workers using it. but. This is both an opportunity and a threat. We need to be aware of the risk if the app is given to an undereducated health worker that this person might feel overconfident and, and actually end up doing something that they are not strong in doing. Third, of course, using a technology needing power is also a limitation. Many do not have access to regular powers um, in, uh, in the areas where we work. So what we suggest is that we bring out the app as well with these sustainable solar charging um, solutions. And last, the penetration of smartphones is still limited in the areas that we work. Um, but here we have time on our side. And I was so proud of this, actually, this slide before Be My Eyes went on the stage and said that he had like over 100,000 downloads. <laughs> but, but we have 300 downloads, uh, which is actually quite a lot for us. Um, and, uh, and we also see that there is a massive interest in using the app. And that comes both from NGOs that want to implement it into their programs, ministries of health that want to use it into their national trainings. Um, again, of course, we don't see it as a work alone tool. It should be implemented into already existing training systems as well as national training um, programs. Um, so we have actually partners now spreading from Africa to Asia. 
Um, and for instance, in Myanmar, India, it's the Ministry of Health that want to use the app uh, as part of their national trainings. And in Zanzibar and Tanzania and Sierra Leone, we are working with uh, local NGOs on implementing the app there. We in maternity, of course, the app is uh, free for download for everyone, so everyone can just go in and use it. But we want to support the partners that want to implement it on how to best use it in the best and most sustainable way. One of the way we do that is actually by adapting the app to the different settings. One major challenge when you are adapting the app to all these different countries all over is that we, of course, need to translate it into different languages. So we have one now in Swahili for Tanzania and one in French in Guinea and um, Benin. But what we see is also that translating from English to a language that is often less developed than English makes the text a lot longer as well as the speak. So that's also something we have to adapt to. Um, furthermore, we've seen that, um, that in some countries it's not enough to translate the text and the speak. Uh, in Myanmar and in India, for example, the, we've learned that the health workers um, here will have, actually have difficulties relating to the videos if the people in it look African. So here we are now working on actually changing the animation so it looks more like a person from Myanmar or an Indian person. Um, also, we see that in some countries we have to adapt the clinical instructions, even though we try to make an international uh, tool. We see that if we want it to be approved in the countries where we implement, we sometimes have to change some of the clinical um, instructions in the videos. So, making a success when implementing actually demands that there is local ownership and that it has been approved at the national level, perhaps even used at the national level, and that they, it has been adapted to these local settings. One last thing I want to show is that, like you also mentioned with Be My Eyes, of course we want to continue to track how is the usage of this app. We also want to tr continue to build evidence. Uh, we will do that through implementation research. But one of the most simple ways is also to continue to see where is it being used, how much is it being used, what videos are the most popular, and so on. So we can continue to figure out where do we need to make changes and where does it actually work as we want it to be working. So that was all for me. Um, I look forward to the questions afterwards. Thank you.